You are being watched. The government has a machine. It spies on you every minute of every day. That's the beginning of a television show called Person of Interest. I'm here to tell you it's not just the government. Many, many other people are interested in everything that you do. Whether you walk across the campus, how you walk across the campus, you are indeed being watched. We know about some of the cyber bad guys. For example, just this week, a little town in Quebec's website was hacked by Mecca, the Middle Eastern Computer Army, whoever they are. Why would they attack this website? Because it's low-hanging fruit. They obviously didn't spend a lot of money to protect themselves. Then again, Sony spent a lot of money to protect themselves, and look at all the good it did them. Identity theft is the fastest growing crime. There's no question that so many people. Who in the room has been a victim of identity theft? Well, the latest thing I've heard is writers whose identity is being hijacked and people are giving them writing assignments, paid writing assignments, then complaining about the quality and the actual writer doesn't know anything about it because it was somebody else who grabbed her resume. And of course, we can have international panic. There's our friend Kim sitting over there. He's very good at looking at things. Here he's looking at the Korean military. And we can have international incidents related to this. So what is this all about? Well, I feel I'm personally being chased right now. I'm being chased by rental cars. This is one of my favorite travel buying sites. But look at this. They are trying to sell me a rental car. They're not just trying to sell me any rental car. They want to sell me a rental car in Vancouver, BC for February 4th to February 8th. How do they know that I'm going to be in Vancouver then? I had to send a fax yesterday. I don't have a fax machine anymore. That's ridiculous. So I used an electronic fax service online. Now I'm getting ads for Hello eFax. How do all these people know? How does one website talk to another? It would be like if you walked down a shopping mall, looked at something in one store, and magically a store on the other side of the mall is showing you a product. That's the same thing. Like all the mall guys are talking to each other. This is how it's really done. It's called FBX. Facebook Exchange is a system that almost no one knows about in which websites talk to each other and they sell you in a real-time auction. So when I was targeted with those particular ads there, my eyeballs were bought for a fraction of a cent by Hotwire and by eFax because they know I'm interested in that. So I am indeed being tracked. There's a wonderful story about how Target knew a teenage girl was pregnant before her father. Charles Duhigg wrote about it in the New York Times. Dad comes into the store near Minneapolis and goes, hey, what are you guys doing? My daughter's 16 years old. You're sending him ads, her ads for baby clothes and things like that. Are you encouraging her to have sex? Two weeks later, Dad calls up and says, now it's my turn to apologize. There were some things going on in my house I didn't know about. She's due in August. And Target knew this by the pattern of her purchases. They knew that, in fact, she had bought a certain kind of prenatal vitamin. She had bought some oil that pregnant women run on their bellies. And they want her business because they know you change your buying habits at certain times in your life. When you have your first child is one of those times. Therefore, Target said, oh, no, we're being creepy. We better not be creepy. How did they fix it? They still send out the targeted ads, but they mix in things for power tools and barbecues <laughs> with the maternity stuff. And the money quote in the article was, if she doesn't know we're doing it, it's not creepy. Well, it is creepy. <laughs> There's a whole area called predictive analytics. I will not hit every aspect on here. I just thought I'd show you a list. But for example, if you order a meal on a flight, on those few flights that still allow you to order a meal, international flights, that's being tracked. That goes to the US government. I, I usually alternate kosher meal, Muslim meal, vegetarian <laughs> meal, so they have no idea what I, what I actually want. There's a great service called zoominfo.info.com. Zoominfo goes out there and forms profiles of you. I look myself up. I'm a professor at the University of Calgary. I ran a program called Shad Valley. I'm the board member of a defense company in Virginia. That's wrong. I'm not on that. So I corrected my profile. Then I looked up Stephen Harper. They had him as the odious leader of the Conservative Party. Why? Because they harvest newspaper headlines. One of the headlines, that's what they called him. Zoom Info decide that must be his job title. I decided to creep on my kid. His name is Jordan. He lives in New York City. And I called him up. I said, hey, 
uh, I hear you like a certain band. He said, how do you know that? I said, because it's on your profile on last.fm. How do you know I have a profile? It's all tied together by something as simple as your name and your email address. He and I now have a non-proliferation -proliferat treaty because he's a very good hacker too, and we don't creep on each other anymore. <laughs> Even who you know and like on Facebook may affect your credit score. There's a company called Lendo. What does Lendo do? They set your interest rate based on your friends on Facebook. If you have lots of credit-worthy friends who have done business with them, you get a low rate. If you don't tell them anything, you get a high rate. But if your friends default, you're in trouble. And if you default, they reserve the right to shame you to all of your friends on Facebook. So if you get a loan from Lendo, you want to know about that. The ethical issues about this are not going to go away, OK? An insurance company has been known to mine data about people to find out how likely are they to change providers. In other words, they want to set the, the insurance rate based upon whatever they can. And one of the things they know is that certain people, particularly people in certain poor neighborhoods in the US, have so much trouble getting any insurance, they're not going to change companies. They're afraid they won't get approved. So those people are actually being charged a higher rate than somebody who's the same but lives in a more upscale neighborhood. Some of you may have heard of the uh, wonderful progressive snapshot. Flo is on television all the time telling you, put this thing in your car. Well, I can tell you, I've looked inside it. It really isn't all that fancy. It measures three things. How much do you drive? What time of day do you drive? Because if you drive between midnight and 5 AM, even if you're not drunk, everybody else on the road is drunk, and it's a higher risk. And it does measure one thing about your driving, how often you stop suddenly. Now, it doesn't know, was that a kid who just ran out in front of you? Maybe that's why you stopped. It just knows that you brake suddenly. And it may give you a discount. So in reality, it's what they call usage-based insurance. It's insurance based upon how much you drive your car. If you're somebody who has the car just for the occasional use, you should get a lower rate. What I have to tell you is that this can be subject to subpoena. You, it's right in their terms of service. If you have this thing on your car and you have an accident, it might show up in court. A guy in Quebec's car computer was actually subpoenaed because he was found to be driving twice the speed limit in a fatal crash. It's attracting the interest of some people who have nothing to do with insurance. Think about this. You're all ecologically conscious, so you probably, if you drive, you drive a hybrid car or a mini car. You're not using a lot of gasoline. States like Oregon, just one example, base their road tax on the sale of gasoline. If you have an electric car, you never buy any gasoline. Now the state is actually talking about putting monitors on your car so they will know how much you drove in a year. And of course, people are saying, that's creepy. I don't want the state to know where I drive and where I stop. Things are going to get even more interesting. I'm spending a lot of time now looking at the biological side of creepiness. This is my friend Jared, who has a service in New York City. He drives a bus around in Winnebago, and he will do DNA testing. His slogan is, do you want to know who your daddy is? I know who's your daddy. <laughs> He's actually now doing a reality television show that's based loosely on the tales of the swab, the things that he's found out. But I have to tell you that DNA is really the next frontier in this. There is now a technology called touch DNA. I have now left enough of my DNA on this clicker that you might well be able to do a proper DNA analysis. Madonna has now employed a, an assistant who goes around, whenever she drinks from a glass, Madonna has that glass wiped clean so that somebody will not clone her DNA and go out and have her babies. We've had several cases now where people have gone online when they were the child of sperm donation, and they have actually found their sperm donor father. And sooner or later, they're going to be asking for money for college and stuff like that. So you can track quite a bit. You can track people's likely surnames for their DNA. So the reality is soon, you're going to walk into the Target store. And when you use that little keypad there, what's going to happen is the keypad will swoop away, just like those toilet seats that disappear under you. And they will grab that keypad, sequence your DNA. Next time you come into Target, it's going to say, did you know you're pre-diabetic? We have a special discount coupon just for people like you. If you think that's creepy, stores are going to get so creepy. 
There's a technology called audio spotlight. It's a speaker that sends a concentrated beam. When you stand on a spot just like this, you hear something. And I've seen a test of it in Australia. Hello, you can hear me, but no one else can. I'm the voice of your conscience. Do you see those bananas in front of you? They're expensive, but they're fair trade bananas. You know what's the right thing to do. Well, the sales of those bananas went up 152%. So stores are implementing this technology. Mondelez International, the company behind Chips Ahoy and all those wonderful cookies we love so much, are going to put smart shelves into shopping, uh, shopping malls. The store will have a sensor that will monitor you and it will detect if you're male or female, figure out your approximate age, your body mass index, and you might see a flashing coupon right there just for you, two for one today on Oreo cookies. So the DNA testing is definitely an interesting uh, question. I want to leave time to tell you what you should do about this. The first thing is to be stingy with your information. Don't give out information if you don't have to. If somebody asks you for, uh, on a survey for your birthday, give whatever you want. There are very few people actually entitled to know your birthday. I used to work with a police officer, Constable Kathy McDonald. We would stand in front of school kids and she would say, well, when they say your name, put in your name or IP Freely or Seymour Butts or some name like that. And the kids would say, you're a police officer telling us to lie? Well, the answer is, with the exception of the government and your bank and a few other people, you probably should be lying. So feel free to have lots of birthdays. I get birthday greetings just about every week. I know somebody who put a changing birthday on Facebook, and so every month he had a birthday, and he was amazed by how many of his so-called friends wished him happy birthday over and over. They sent the same greeting. So that shows how sincere friendship on Facebook can be. And by the way, there's a new concept called enemy on Facebook where you can declare your enemies. And the trending ones are Rick Santorum, Bill Gates, uh, and of course, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Consider deleting photos. You know, it's very, very important, particularly as you start your career, something that's out there. If you drank vodka from the lab glassware, that is not going to get you a job as a chemistry lab assistant. In fact, it's pretty well acknowledged that even though they say they don't, employers, college admissions people, everybody, police are looking. I did go and I asked somebody senior in the CIA, there's a rumor that you guys created Facebook, did you? And he said, actually no, we may have had something to do with funding and I won't talk about that. But he said, however, if there wasn't a Facebook, we would have created it and we use it every day. <coughs> Consider privacy when you vote. Some politicians are much more privacy friendly than others and what you really need to do is go home today clean up your computer and your cloud storage. Because what have you got out there? You've probably got last year's tax return. You may have medical test results. You may have things on there that you don't want. The problem is you can never totally clean it up. I get approached periodically by lawyers asking, can you expunge this young man's record from the internet? We'll pay you. And I always go, yeah, I'll try, but no guarantees. If you put a picture up there for fractions of a second, we now know the US government has probably grabbed it, but many other things may have grabbed it as well. Some poor woman in Hamilton, Ontario, saw her baby up there and went berserk. The reality is once a photo is out there, it can wind up in all kinds of different contexts. And I guess I need to tell you about Miss Teen USA, Cassidy Wolf. Poor Cassidy got infected with a piece of malware on her computer. It allowed bad guys to turn on her camera they took photos of Cassidy in her bedroom. Cassidy was blackmailed. She went to the FBI. She did the right thing, and the guy is now in jail. So in terms of cleaning up your storage, what you want to do is start with the obvious things, like Facebook. Tighten up all of your privacy settings. Make sure that those are, are exactly what you want them to be, which is probably very, very restrictive. And also, just whenever you subscribe to a magazine or something like that, don't use your real email address. Your email address is now as powerful as your social insurance number. In fact, I showed you how I tracked poor Jordan through Spokio. One of the most powerful links that I used was just his email address, because you use that to register for all kinds of things. Your pets are creepy. And why do I say your pets are creepy? I saw a talk down at DEF CON last year that dogs and cats can be outfitted with technology. It was called War, War Kitty, and that was a little uh, cat that was wearing a collar 
that allowed him to snoop on everybody's Wi-Fi and denial of service dog. Okay, so there was a patch on the back of this dog that said service dog within small letters denial of. This dog had so much electronics on him that when he would walk into a store, all the computers would crash. He'd go into a Best Buy, you know, on his owner's leash, and all of a sudden all the TVs would be taken over in the store. So there are a lot of hacker pranksters out there who can have a lot of fun with you. But do remember that the world is a creepy place. There are many, many creepy people out there, and do your best to avoid them. Thank you very much.